All right. Uh, hello, everyone. So um, just before we start, I'd like to make a little survey. So here, who is a data scientist? All right. Who's a software developer? OK. Who's a manager? All right. And who's just curious? <laughs> Can be probably everyone. OK, so that's great. <laughs> OK, so I'm, I'm Patrick. And uh, this is Zara. And we have uh, John down there. And, um, and basically, today, um, we'll be, basis we'll be um, showing you how to build an AI product using our tool. And uh, maybe I'm s jumping ahead, but it's, uh, we're officially releasing our new tool today. So and I'll be presenting it to you. And uh, this is what we use to build that AI product in one hour. But uh, think of it as a cook sh cooking show. And I'll explain the process behind this. So um, I think you all know about the incredible advances in AI. Uh, that's some of you, it's probably why you're here. You're like, OK, I, want, I need to know what's going to happen. And, and I, I, I made this little graph to make sure that we all know um, like what's happening. So basically, from a text prompt, you'll be able to create pretty much everything you want, whether it's an image, a document, a video, a voice. And you'll see some of them will be presenting in the AI pipeline that we'll be building today. And also, from a text prompt, you can, build some, you can write some code. And even some of that code is 100% functional. It works super well. And it's uh, really well written. And all the other way around works. Uh, so if you have from, uh, from an image, you can get a caption. That means a description of what's in the image. From a video, you can basically have a description of what happened in the, the video, and so on. So all these are connected. And in between each, each of those bubble, basically, there's an AI model that is doing that. And every day, there's a new AI model, so much better than the one from yesterday. And I, I'm saying like today and yesterday. And it's, it happens every day. There are really groundbreaking results in AI all the time. So, and as you know, uh, now um, things like the LLMs, like GPT-4, uh, Cloud2, and so on, and Lama 3 they're all able to perform better than humans, in, um, or be better than 99% of humans, 93% of humans in most standardized tests. So this is kind of, uh, OK, that's a lot is happening here. Um, there's also um, AI automation. So this means there are little software, pretty crude, quickly, qu quickly made, that are able to generate really, really functional code automatically, search the web, extract information, gather data, save it, use it again, and so on, and to build uh, software for this. All this in an automatic manner when you connect it to, say, a, a large language model, whatever is locally or on the cloud API. So, so from there, we're seeing that um, the advancement are exponential. So every day, there's a new thing. And the thing from yesterday is getting old. And uh, so this causes problem like, uh, like, like us. Basically, we, we help companies uh, integrate AI in, inside their companies, big industries. And we found that it was really hard to keep, to keep up with the new advances. And, and we realized, OK, so we have all these clients. We're trying to get um, them the state of the art. We want uh, the best solution for our clients. And then we realized that we, it's really hard to keep up. And then when we basically take one of this code, um, we start using it. Oh, I'm, a I'm able to generate images. I'm able to classify images. I'm able to do such and such with this state-of-the-art model, it was really hard to share it between the team. Where we had trouble, like, OK, so it takes a long time to run on your computer. When you succeed, all right, I've, I've got some result. Then after this, you want to transfer it to someone. It takes a, a day or two to work on two different machines. So all this got us thinking, OK, we need something that allows us to do this. And it's not quite an easy thing. And we looked, on the, we looked everywhere, what could, could we use to solve this problem? But we could not quite find what we needed. And also, when you want to connect two pieces of code, state of the art, great results together, it's really hard to connect them. Because uh, 
um, there's a conflict in packages and so on, and there's a, it's always hard to make two software, very di different software, work together and exchange information. So, so and you know, and in my life, I'm kind of managing a lot of AI projects, and also I'm coding, I'm developing, and so on. And it, w it took a lot of work uh, to manage the team and figure out who's going to do what and how to bring everything together. So, so based on all that experience, we thought like there needs to be a new tool to achieve this more faster, better, and, repli and, and for it to be replicable. So the vision became more like, what if we could just drag and drop GitHub repos? I take this state of the art, I know it works, so I take it, I drag and, dr and I drop it in my solution, and then the, you know, to continue that vision, what if I could connect it like Lego blocks? So I take this amazing repo, take this one, two nice pieces of code that I know they give great results, I connect them together, and now they can exchange information. Okay, so that's great. And then I, we thought like, okay, so, so that would allow us to really uh, accelerate. But then there's these stories about low code where you, you need to use pre-made blocks and so on, but that, for us that was, not, that was not enough. What we needed is to be able to go deep in the code, change everything, erase everything, bring my code in, so we need full access to the code all the time because we're developers and we don't want to be told exactly what to do. You know? We want tools that helps us get there, but we don't want us we don't want to be told, okay, you have to write all this yourself, uh, uh, or we wrote it all for you. you, know, you we want to have control over the code. So, so the, the idea behind this is like, okay, so what if we could operationalize GitHub repos and also keep up with those advances? Because like, you know, last week there was a new model that came in, and I, I mean, every week there's something like groundbreaking, you're like, okay, I need to try it. I need to see if it fits in my solution. And if I have an already running AI pipeline, and I realized that this new code is so much better, I want to swap it easily. So, so that's basically trying to continue a bit on this dream. And the last part, which is for us, we're working on it and it's coming soon, is what if I could deploy this big pipeline that I created with one click and I can access GPUs because this computer is nice, but it's not, uh, <laughs> it doesn't run the speed I need. So. So today, we're officially launching uh, Zeta Forge. It's on GitHub, it's open source. So you can start uh, using it. Uh, you can start uh, just telling us what you think. There's also a Discord channel, so if you wanna join, uh, you're, uh, we're, we're really happy to hear all your comments, good and bad, and so on. The goal is to make you know, that vision that I showed. We took a really large steps towards this, but we wanna push that even further and make this, this tool a perfect tool for the community. And um, so, so, yeah, so Zeta Forge, the way it works, so I talked about those blocks. And what we're doing here is basically we're connecting them together. So what we do around each piece of code, we create a very light interface that says, okay, these are the inputs, these are the outputs. All this needs to run in a container, a Docker container. It needs to be isolated from the rest. And that's uh, whatever you do in the code there, no, no one cares. As long as you have those two inputs and outputs, it can happen. So many things can happen inside. As long as you control that flow, the code can run in that its own container, transfer the information to the next. So you can do really, really large computations on uh, Kubernetes clusters, and that means that you can have access to a lot of uh, resource. So, so in this case, this is just a, a, an example. So you have the input on the left. It passes to aircraft de uh, detection. You have some visualization related to the model. There's some analysis, more visualization, and then you can send uh, to, to one of your server, one of your database. So this is just a very simple example. We'll be looking at one that is a little bit more advanced. So what is a block? So like I said, it's a code plus a very light interface. It's a JSON, basically just saying what are the inputs, what are the outputs, um, and that's pretty much it. And where it runs in a container, all these containers are kind of uh, connected together. There's, um, there's a, a little engine that makes sure that all the data, data passes correctly between the, container, uh, the containers. And you can build so many things. You can put a full GitHub repo, almost drag and drop. You can wrap the light interface around it so that you can use it. And um, you can put it in API and we'll see I'm, we're in the what we'll be presenting. We have something that connects to OpenAI's API. 
to also um, stable diffusion and so on. So basically, we have we have all that access. And if you want, you can connect using your code in whatever language you need. Uh, you can connect to a database, extract data, process it, send it back. It's up to you what you want to put in there. And then, and here the it's a it can run any because it's in the Docker container. It can run any language as long as you follow that small interface. And uh, that's, that's the idea behind this. And we, we built this so that it can really, really, um, you can accelerate and dispatch all these, op these uh, section of code, dispatch them to different team members and so that it's easier to, to deal with and manage. So, um, and one, one nice thing is that all the, the second you have a nice block, then you can share it, you zip it, you send it, and then that's, that's it. It should run the same way on for every developer. And, uh, and that was the, the key behind this, is that when you do it once, you don't have to do it ever again for any other people. Everyone can do it the same way. So that's, that's the idea. And like I said, it, this is a, uh, it's not low code, it's full code. So that means when you click on that little button there, this means that uh, you're opening your code or uh, the code that uh, was used to create this block. So you always have uh, access to the code. You can change things there, save again, run the block differently. There's, you can do that. So, so one of the example here, so <coughs> we would assemble. So here on the, um, it's written file. You can choose a file. And in this, in this case, we drop the block. And I'll, I'll be showing the demo uh, later on. Um, so basically, you drop your file. You select your file. And this is a very simple example. You would put some parameters. You connect it to the main block. And you, I can add a lot of vi different visualizations. So you can visualize vi stacks of videos, images, text, and so on. So every time you have computation happening in a block, you connect a visual visualization or even any type of HTML page that you want. So that gives you full um, power on how you want to customize your visualization. So, so, and we, the nice thing is that we, we're starting to create a lot of these blocks. And since it's open source, a lot of these blocks will be kind of, will be coming up and people will be able to use it, dra drag and drop it. So you don't have to do those nice visualization if you don't want to. But if you want to create your own, you can also. It's HTML basically. So, so that's the idea. In this case, Kanyej just extracted uh, some of the, um, the outline. So, and um, like I said, you can bring your own code. Uh, the goal is, is a kind of, um, I mean, I'm, I like to dig really deep in the code, but I'm also very lazy. So I like to use packages. I like to do pip install, the package come. I use the function. I'm super happy. I really doesn't matter how they did it, but I know the answer has been tested by the community. I like that. But also, I like to assemble things my way. So, so this. This software is meant to do both. You know, basically, I'm a, you know, we kind of built us, we built it for us so that we can kind of go fast on dropping those blocks. Because if I did one for a stable diffusion that generates images, and that's the latest, I don't want to have to do it many times. If a team member did it, I don't want to have to redo it. So the idea is just drag and drop it, and uh, I can customize inside. So. That's so really made for devs and will also explain to everyone, like I said, with the visualization, if you need to explain, create some visualization, then you can add a special block that allows you to, um, to do this. Um, so some of the blocks will be av or available with the software and we'll be pushing a lot as it goes. So if you want to follow us on social medias, LinkedIn and so on, then you'll see we'll start posting a lot of our, our blocks. And when the community produce really interesting blocks, we'll also push them around so that everyone can, can start uh, building their own and actually using other people's um, uh, very uh, powerful block slash packages slash uh, very well contained code. So, so yeah, so the tech, like I said, uh, is really about uh, running it on Kubernetes cluster. So it can be local. Um, Kubernetes runs locally. It runs in our clouds, and it can run on your own cloud. So that's, that's how we decided to do this, is that we thought that we don't want to create one cloud solution and then force uh, companies to go there. We want companies to be able to deploy on their own infrastructure because data should not leave a company. I'm sorry, but it's, it's, we, we learned that. We know that. So data should stay within a company. So the idea is, uh, I mean, it's can be, it seems like it could be a lot of work. But in this case, it's one little server 
a Kubernetes cluster, and then your your set your data should stay there, and you can follow all your your good your your good practices for how you manage the data. So, so that was the idea. So, so that's when we designed this. We it needed to run first on the computer and then uh, on a local computer because if a data scientist wants to start using it, they don't want to be sending it to the same cloud. You want to start using it on your computer with the data that you already have access. And later on, if you want to, you say, okay, that works really well. Now I'm going to ask if I can put it on a, a local cluster, and then that, then you can you can go from there. So in our case, we'll be also offering people who want to do compute, so that's uh, so that you can uh, stop waiting and waiting and waiting, so you can have access to uh, good machines. So yeah, so so what we build the product that will be uh, that you will actually kind of be building today is um, moral stories for kids. The idea is that you want, you want to, your kid to learn about a new, uh, something that they just realize your kid needs to learn something, and you don't know how to explain. You say, like, a key, please clean the, lid, the cat litter every day. <laughs> so so that, that example is from, from my son. So I want my son to clean its, the cat litter every day. So the idea is you send that you as a prompt. I would like a story about Pokemons, and uh, I want the kid to learn to clean uh, the cat litter every day. And then it generates a story for them. So, so it's a very tailored story. So that was the product that we built. It, uh, we assembled that in, uh, in about a week. Uh, the, r the way we did it was by uh, dispatching each of these uh, sections to uh, the members of the team. And we had nothing to start with, so really we started from scratch. But now all these blocks are made, so now we can reuse them in so many ways uh, without any issues. So those are examples. I want to teach my six-year-old girl to eat more carrots, use a princess and a dragon for a story. That's all you need. And uh, you need maybe an API key uh, to, uh, to a large language model. And um, I guess I uh, can show maybe some of the example. So this is an example of what was produced. So, and uh, I don't think we'll have that. Yeah, we don't have the sound connected. But basically, it also generated the text to speech. So, so this means that not only we generated an image, or we generated the text per page, generated the image, and also tr uh, to t did text to speech uh, related to this, uh, to generate this, this audio here. And it generated all the pages. And uh, oops, oh, I think it was playing. Yeah, so those are. And then we, we have all these images. Wow, internet is very slow. But, but yeah, so, so that created a small story that did, that did the job. So a few of the kids in <laughs> around got like specialized stories lately while we're building this. So. Okay, so that's, um, and this is the way we built it, is that we assigned, so we did uh, the outline of what the pipeline should look like, and that's a key thing that I think you'll be learning today, is how to think as in Lego blocks, <laughs> how to think in Minecraft, how do you think of the, the, the small pieces that you need to, to use in there. So these are, we realized that these were the main uh, section of code, the main blocks. One is text-to-speech, the other one was to tell the story based on the prompt, the other one was to publish on the website because what you saw was a website that was generated and then pushed on the GitHub server and then created into a page. And then you needed to generate those images. So these are the main parts. And the way we did it is that, okay, we don't have time. So, okay, meet Zara, go to Stable Diffusion, Storyteller, Zara took it. I took the how to publish on a website and create the website. And then we did also text to speech. So, and all this, we didn't really talk too much. We just, uh, everyone did their, their part, and after that, we assembled it in a big, big pipeline. So we really kind of um, it paralyzed the work. Usually this would be a nightmare, like uh, something like that, and in the time that we did is uh, probably impossible. It would be some kind of Python, it would be some kind of notebook, and people would be sharing code, then you'd start running it, oh, it doesn't work, I don't understand. Oh, but that dependency conflict with this one, and then sometime we'd be spending, in the past we spent months, I'm not joking, just to get two of those things together that works correctly, 
uh, is uh, really challenging. This, it runs on your computer, it will run on the other person's computer, and then you connect it because there's an interface uh, uh, between the code. So, so this worked really well, and uh, we managed to create it. So now the activity is as follows. So you came to a workshop. So basically, you'll be working a little bit. So these are the blocks that we use to create that story. And your activity, your job as <laughs> the, the, the Lego students of the day would be to uh, take post-its. Uh, you see there's all the, the boards on the side. So you would take a post-it. You can write one, the name of those models, uh, those blocks. And the goal is to recreate the pipeline yourself uh, based on what is written here. So each word here, so I think there's one there, uh, text to image. So that was the stable diffusion one that generates images. So you can write it, and now you can create a line in between, uh, between each of them, a little bit like we had here. So basically, you need to connect it. So, And uh, I guess I'll be giving like uh, mm -hmm, about... Yeah, with about like 15 minutes, so you can work uh, per table, and then we'll be reviewing who's the best. <laughs> and I'm sure, uh, I don't know, is there, are there prizes for that? Or <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. So, so yeah, so per table, you can go get grab a board. Uh, you see the pen there, you can write on the, the black, so you can use the, the pen to connect the post-it. Uh, Post-its are the block, blocks, the pen are the links between it. Um, if you want to add some input output, you can, but uh, you just let's keep it uh, really uh, at the eye level if you want. So, all right, clock is ticking. Go, go tables. <laughs> All right, okay, so now is the time for the solution. So I think uh, you, you guys did a really good job. Um, it's, uh, I've seen some really good pipelines. And I, oh, <laughs> that's good. Okay, so let's see. So here's the pipeline, and I'll be uh, doing the, in the software right away, but I'll just go really quickly over it. So, so you see here, you have, um, you have the text input. You have the two API keys. Uh, so I, I know I only gave you one, but that's fine. So let's don't worry about the, the stability AI key because you can have both. You can call the API if you want, or you can use a local block with the model already there. So that's up to you. These I didn't give because they're just the visualization. So basically, they're the text. So the, the first one here is um, uh, the storyteller. After this, it's the ethic reviewer. My fingers don't work. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So, so there, here you have the API keys. So this one goes to the GPT storyteller. So, and we have also the text, where, which is basically what you want uh, the book. Uh, what you want the book to say to your kid. And you can also tailor to the name of the child. And also, you can uh, add a few things. And also, I made it rhyme if you want. You can say, OK, make it rhyme. So we'll create the story with some rhyme. That was uh, the idea of my son. He said, oh, I wanted to rhyme. OK, so I listened to my client. So <laughs> after this is the GPT reviewer. And this will talk about it a little bit more in detail. But the reason is that things like OpenAI, they have their own reviewer inside. But if you're using Llama 3, which is on your computer, you can get some very special stuff if you're not careful. So it's good to have a, GP, a reviewer that is trying to put what is being produced in context. So this one is connecting to OpenAI's API. Uh, but you could also use a Llama 3 um, or whatever other model, very old ones if you want, uh, in the same the block itself. So it never leaves your, that your, your infrastructure. And you would put a. You, Really, it's important to put a reviewer or two if you want. So then, um, normally we would think right away I can pass the story page by page because it generates the storyteller creates one page, um, or it creates a JSON object with uh, the the words for each page. So you cannot just pass it directly to stable diffusion. You kind of need to manipulate to kind of um, I'd say uh, clean up 
uh, the prompt, so it works really well for uh, creating an image that's related. So uh, Zara worked a lot on this, and basically she needed to say, okay, so we describe the character and so on, so we have some continuity between the images. And uh, of course, there's a lot of work to be done there to improve that whole product, but as a, as a, a case for today, it, it works perfectly, and the images follow. It's uh, usually the same kid with the same uh, air color and so on, so that's already uh, really good. Um, and here we, we see, like, uh, I guess I'll, I'll show some of the text. So, so, this, so this is some of the text that's been generated and it passes through. In this case, the reviewer was pretty okay with whatever was written, so it didn't change anything. The prompts were created. And just so we're, we're really clear of what's happening here, when I said it's, it's uh, full code, it means that the code is all here. So if you want to modify it and rerun it again, you can. So, so what you have here is the prompt. Uh, to kind of help the LLM to make those decisions. And, um, and you can add how many functions, how many uh, uh, repos that you need. And you have certain files, and this is the Docker file, very simple file. Sometimes if you're just running Python, it's always the same. And you have uh, the requirements, in this case, wow, OpenAI. And, uh, but that, that really is all you need. And this will ro work for everyone, and that's, that's really the idea. So that's, that's when I say full code, it's there. It means it's accessible in one click. You know what it is, you know what it did. And, um, and as you go on, it creates the stable diffusion. Here we have a visualization, and um, that's, a, that's a way to review it. So that's the carrot kid, needs to eat carrots. So th these are all the image per page that were generated. And um, all right. And uh, in this case, I have the result aggregator, which brought everything together. So it's really just taking the file pads, making sure it's all there. And this is the audio. I don't know if, it, if I click, it's going to, no, it, uh, we can't hear it. But it's basically that's the voice of, uh, in this case, the, the person kind of narrating the book. And then we send it to a React book. So basically, this is a website builder. Um, I did some bunch of React, and I'm just passing the data. I dropped it in public compiled a website, and now I created a website uh, just using this block. So this means that you cannot just you do it for just a kid's storybook. You can do it for PowerPoints, whatever website you want to create. You pass, you create all your AI data, comes in, gets dropped into a React, which is kind of state of the art. Um, all these things are state of the art, and that's kind of the key, key part here, and I, maybe I didn't insist enough, is that all these models, it's all the, the best of the best, I mean, maybe since yesterday, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so maybe today it really changed, but, but the, the idea is that we can use all these state-of-the-art things, connect them together, and get something that is uh, w what it is, and uh, something that is state-of-the-art. So the sum of state-of-the-art is usually state-of-the-art uh, if you kind of put the glue correctly. And, uh, and so, so in this case, uh, we have a, a website. And in this case, I decided instead of sending it to um, our servers uh, to publish the website, or Netlify, or Heroku, and so on. Um, I decided I, I don't, I don't want to mess up with the API, so I sent it to my GitHub repo, my personal repo. So the basically, the, the website with all the data is now in a repo. Every time I run it, I kind of have a new repo that appears as my personal thing. I don't know how GitHub feels about it, but that seems to be legal. So, so I have like, all those repos with those random names. It's kind of nice, because then I can see what was produced every time. And then I made a call that says, take this, because it's a website, publish it on GitHub pages. And then basically I created a website uh, using good old GitHub, and it's, it works really good. This works really well. I have uh, like now, like, I don't know, 50 websites since uh, we started that. And um, it's all a storybook. And then I plugged in the QR code maker. And uh, if you want to take just a picture, then you'll get the website from there. And uh, yeah. As the single thing. All right. Yeah, and then you. Once upon a time, in a colorful village, there lived a young boy named Timmy. Timmy had curly red hair and wore glasses. Yeah, so basically now you, you have also the narration, you have the images, and so on. And uh, so you can basically tailor uh, a book to a kid. And um, yeah, so I guess I know I'll, I'll, I'll let Zara. Uh, uh, continue. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, okay. 
So yeah, as you, uh, as almost all of you uh, went through the pipeline, there is uh, one of the blocks there that's uh, the GPT ethics reviewer. I wanna uh, just briefly discuss it with you. So the GPT ethics reviewer wants uh, to make sure that the story generated by uh, GPT is actually in the correct context and also suitable for uh, your child to listen to. Um, so the way I uh, made this block is that uh, simply I put a prompt and I use this prompt, uh, attach the input story to the end of the prompt, and ask uh, the GPT to revise the story if it's necessary. So the prompt is, you're a story editor responsible for carefully inspecting a given story to check if it is ethical and suitable for children. Make any necessary modifications to ensure that the story is appropriate for children. And this way we can ensure that our pipeline is safe and responsible. Um, this is an example of how, how it can modify um, uh, anything if necessary. So for example, in the prompt, it says, teach a child to be careful of bloodthirsty, violent monsters, and you don't want that for your children. So uh, the GPT reviewer does the job for you and instead changes it to teach a child to be cautious and aware of their surroundings. It also works well if uh, the story, if it was uh, generated by another model, if the story needs modification, it would also uh, modify the story accordingly. So there's uh, also, as Patrick mentioned, you can use uh, GitHub repos and uh, just wrap GitHub repos in a block. So there's an easy way to do that. You can just, uh, you should just put a few blocks in there, a few files in there. So you would need a block interface, which is just a specs file that specifies the input and output variable names. But the good news is that you don't need to do that manually. Um, I'll, I'll go back uh, to that later, but uh, you would also need a requirement.txt file which uh, lists Python packages and the versions that you need for each GitHub repo that you want to use. Uh, there's a Docker file. Uh, you may not need to modify it, but if you want to add a step to your Docker file, you can do it. And then there's the computations.py file, which includes the main logic of your block. And uh, so in the image here, you can see um, there's the compute function that includes the main logic of your code. And then there are a bunch of inputs and some outputs. So if you want to change, uh, modify the structure of your block, the only thing that you would do uh, is that to change the name of the inputs here and the outputs, and then you would compile your block and uh, it would update the structure of your block for you. So it's very easy to work with. And uh, you can also add a folder containing the GitHub repo or any other files that you need uh, to add, like a, a model checkpoint or whatever you need, a config file. You can just add it in the same directory that your block exists. And then uh, that's how easy it is to wrap a GitHub repo. Uh, you can uh, visit the code on uh, GitHub. You can support us by starting our uh, GitHub repo. And also feel free to make contributions, open a new issue. Um, yeah, support us on GitHub. And thank you. You can come and see us at our booth. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>